Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, feeling well, having a fantastic ending to your day and a great evening out there. Great start to your week and uh, just feeling fantastic out there. Got gotcha, you an update on uh, the severe weather that could potentially unfold across the Southern Appalachian Mountains tomorrow. And not just the mountainous regions, there's other areas outside of the mountains that could get impacted by severe weather will also have a chance to see maybe some significant severe weather. There's no hatched risk out yet, but I definitely could see some areas seeing some pretty nasty weather tomorrow. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to figure that out in this video. And of course, in the morning, we'll give you the latest information one more time to try to get you guys prepared. A lot of areas could get impacted that really have not seen a lot of crazy weather in regards to severe weather this year. Most of it's been out to the west but there's certainly a lot of areas that could see it tomorrow that have not seen much of it this spring so far so with that being said if you guys have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it and uh, if you guys got anything that I can pray about please put it in the comments below it gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too you ever consider joining the channel the join tabs under the video or sometimes or it's in my youtube header also i like to say this just talk about it every once in a while but uh i got a pretty tall task to get to 40 members by the end of summer to start a fall and i got 27 28 incredible members that support me unconditionally and it's certainly appreciated it's just a way to support what i do uh monthly and i definitely appreciate the folks that do do that and uh, just even even from people just that occasionally throughout the occasional super thanks one two dollars three dollars um th that means a lot to me it's appreciated and uh just thank y'all for the incredible support let's get rolling here let's look at the what's going on on satellite still got the, the high pressure up here but really what's what's going on up here now is this high pressure has kind of been beaten down we have a pretty sharp cold front that's digging down from canada this will actually cross the great lakes region tomorrow into the northeast and this will actually be such a sharp cold front that it'll actually drop the temperatures throughout the day in certain areas of the north central U.S. and the upper Midwest, the, the Great Lakes region, Wisconsin, the U.P. of Michigan. You'll notice a pretty sharp drop in temperatures tomorrow, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in tomorrow morning's video, but it'll be pretty wild to watch. Definitely a sharp temperature drop, but uh, you still got this uh, ridge of high pressure over the south, moisture kind of moving in this way. And then it kind of comes in more zonal west to east, and then it kind of drops in from the northwest to the southeast. A little bit of a northwest flow right here. And then you have a piece of energy that's going to continue to slide over Kentucky. This is a pretty vigorous short wave. Remember we mentioned short wave. Just think of that as a piece of energy, a kink in the ridge. And that's... Um, if you have the right environmental factors, uh, basically the ingredients in the atmosphere, could really kind of juice up the atmosphere and spark some big time storm development and that is what we're going to see in this entire region tomorrow and that's what we're going to talk about in this video and in fact we keep going look at the slight risk for tomorrow as this includes a large area of a large area which includes mountains charlotte uh, hickory statesville you know winston-salem all the way to raleigh greenville Asheville, knoxville chattanooga you might as well say and nashville you might as well say uh, almost up to Lexington, Kentucky, all the hills of eastern Kentucky, all the mountainous regions of Virginia, of southwest Virginia. So this is going to affect some higher elevations, Johnson City, um, even areas of uh, southern southern um, uh, West Virginia, you know, uh, Beckley. Beckley, West Virginia could see some severe weather tomorrow. And we look at all the risk categories here. There is a 2% chance of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location along this area. There's going to be a boundary that gets draped up through here. And along this boundary, you got to watch for a quick spin up. You got to, there's a changing uh, in directions, wind speed wise, wind direction wise here so this could actually help kind of rotate some of these updrafts up here and we'll certainly out here so we'll certainly see what happens in this region i would not be surprised one bit if this upgrades to a five percent risk um overnight tonight we'll watch hail threats you got a 15 percent risk of hail pushing one inch or di one inch or higher in diameter in this region so uh, within 25 miles in the given location so you can get one inch or larger hail in this region so be aware of this. Some of these storms will produce hail.
And some of it could be a wind-driven hail, hail coming in sideways. But you got the wind risk is a 15% risk of seeing winds of 50 knots or higher, 55 to 60 miles per hour in this entire slight risk right here. I definitely think if if this upgrades to an enhanced risk, I could see it being because of winds. But we'll see what happens as of now. I don't see that happening, but it certainly could. We have a pretty massive area to watch out for for damaging winds. Basically, the entire slight risk has a 15% risk to see winds pushing 50 knots or higher in this region. So let's be aware. So let's talk. Let's take a look at the HRRR model first, the latest long-range HRRR model. How can this unfold? We'll start it off around 8 or 9 a.m. tomorrow. And here come showers and storms already entering out of southern Indiana, southern Illinois, and to basically the entire border up here of northern Kentucky and then we get into about lunchtime noon here comes some intense storms starting to enter western Kentucky watch out Elizabethtown Owensboro you guys could certainly see some 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 nasty weather probably late morning early afternoon but these continue to work their way through let's get this in motion here, here we go so it's around two or three o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow morning Bowling Green like I said Elizabethtown uh, Louisville, I think the, the storms have already cleared. I think there's a lot more stable air up here. Stable meaning uh, it, it's not going to support severe weather, at least up here. Down here in southern Kentucky, it's a totally different atmosphere. I believe we're going to see tomorrow. But watch out. London, Kentucky starts to move into the plateau region. And I think right here is when you could have some significant winds moving through central and southern Kentucky. This line of storms right here needs to be watched. But you know, you stop it right here, and we actually go back a couple frames. I, I don't. There's a there's a there's a couple things going on here. So you got this line of storms developing here in Kentucky, and this is around one or two p.m. And then you also look back in Virginia, and you got some mini supercells trying to get going. Even some storms down here in the foothills and the mountainous regions of uh, North Carolina. So Danville, uh, Roanoke, watch out, North Carolina Virginia border. These there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a boundary right in here that can create an extra spin to the atmosphere. Okay, you got some storms right here in the western Piedmont of North Carolina, the Triad of North Carolina. Look at this storm just outside of Raleigh over here. It's around three or four p.m. But I really think this is the cluster of storms to really watch out for for more widespread storm damage if anything's going to occur. But you just got a couple, quite a few little supercells trying to get going now. We don't know if all these are going to be rotating, but I, I do think that there's going to be at least a little bit of broad rotation with most of these little convective cells out here. You stop here where it's around 4 or 5 p.m., a nasty line of storms blasting through, uh, you know, basically the southern half of Kentucky. This is beginning to enter eastern Kentucky, the eastern Kentucky region, the hills of the state right into here. So... You know, be aware of weather, nasty weather, Hazard, Jackson, West Liberty, uh, Paintsville, uh, Prestonsburg. All you guys could see a pretty nasty line of storms that move through. Damaging winds, large hail is possible throughout the late afternoon, early evening time frame. And then these, you're right, right over the border of Kentucky into western Virginia. And, uh, you know, if you're just happen to be in the mountains, or if you live in the mountains of Western Virginia, I would really be aware of some strong winds. Grundy, uh, Marion, Wise, you know, even watch out Bristol, Tennessee. These storms can, are going to be quite intense if they take on this structure right here. This is around 7, 8, 9 p.m. You know, you got this one cell refiring right here south of Roanoke. So uh, these storms are beginning to cross the mountains, the higher elevations of mountains of uh, mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina. And then you got convection firing over here in northeast North Carolina also, not to just kind of leave you guys high and dry. But, you know, you go to the next panel, go back to this. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you could have some intense storms in northeast North Carolina, southeast of Virginia, you know, 9, 10 p.m. tomorrow. And I think these begin to lose some steam. But this area of storms can continue to truck along the Virginia-North Carolina border, hit Raleigh sometime around midnight tomorrow night. And uh, we'll see what the storm mode looks like down here. But that's kind of what could unfold tomorrow. Um, you know, you, you look at the, uh, let's see if I can get it right here. You look at the NAM on what could happen with this. And, man, I'm, I'm all over the place, ain't I? 
uh, the Nam. What really worries about what worries me about the Nam here is the Nam really likes the idea of a pretty intense line of storms uh, midway, late afternoon in areas of northern Tennessee and southern Kentucky. This is a pretty intense line of storms blasting through southern Kentucky. This would definitely uh, have a straight line damaging wind threat to them. It still shows them convective cells convection firing off in southern Virginia, which these could produce a quick spin up, large hail, um, damaging winds. But this is the main piece of energy that flies in this blast through all of eastern Tennessee, you know, right around dinner time. Eastern Kentucky moves into western Virginia. This heads right over the mountains very quickly. And we'll see how much this kind of maintains itself as it gets into the upstate of South Carolina, North Georgia, late into the evening, 11 p.m midnight you know 1 a.m and we'll see how much this holds together but uh, really the energy kind of building into this you can actually see the boundary right you know this is um, early afternoon tomorrow you got cape on the h triple r model that builds all the way well over a thousand joules per kilogram and then it abruptly drops off right that is that boundary everything south of this boundary this little frontal boundary is fuel for thunderstorms once you get north of this like you get up to cincinnati lexington kentucky you don't have much fuel for thunderstorms this is building into, um, you know, North Carolina, Southern Virginia also. So you definitely have an environment that supports storms. Significant tornado parameter, you see it along this boundary right into here. You know, it goes to a one, two, three, the STP significant tornado parameter. Anything over a one is conditions that support tornadic activity that means that you have the ingredients there that doesn't mean that it's going to happen necessarily it just tells us the areas based off this model run what favors what areas favor um maybe a quick spin up or two and you can see it around this area i would and that's why you have the two percent risk that kind of straight, straight uh, that stretches across this region right here so please be aware and i mean heck you get it into the late evening watch out you know the piedmont of north carolina you know, it, it tries to spike in this region too. So um, we already looked at the NAM, but honestly, guys, that's about it. Just be aware of some, I, I would say, I would say Southern Kentucky, Southeast Kentucky, the Northern counties, uh, the Northern counties of Tennessee, Northeast Tennessee, even getting into Western Virginia, um, damaging winds, watch out, but a quick spin up as possible too in large hail. That's all I got guys. I'll get you another update in the morning. God bless all y'all. Have a great night.